Hi, this is John Landis, Solutions Consultant with Trimec, with a video tech tip exploring the versatility of SolidWorks Move Component tool. When we do assembly modeling, we use Move Component all the time, dragging components around with a left mouse click and rotating them with a right mouse click. But sometimes it can be challenging to move the components where we want them. Well, that's where the Move Component command comes in. When we explicitly issue the command, notice all these options we have in our Property Manager. For example, we can ask SolidWorks to only allow our drag motion to be along the cardinal X, Y, and Z directions. We can change the direction that we're moving it by clicking on the appropriate axis indicator on our coordinate system icon. And now I can drag this guy in the X direction and change it as needed. Another thing we can do is ask SolidWorks to simply move a component along an entity that we select. So for example, if I select this edge, when I drag this knob around, it will only move parallel to that edge. We could also explicitly specify a delta X, delta Y, delta Z. And finally, we can come in here and just give it an explicit XYZ position with respect to the origin. Of course, we have some of these options as well under the rotate section. We can rotate components about a particular entity or explicitly specifying the rotation about X, about Y, about Z. These are really handy tools to allow us to move our components with a little more accuracy and precision than simply dragging them around the screen. SolidWorks Interference Detection is an awesome tool, but it only tells us about the state of the model as it is right now. It doesn't show any interferences here, but it doesn't tell me anything about interferences that'll crop up as I move my model within its range of motion. Well, fortunately for me, under the Move Component tool, we have this great evaluative tool called Collision Detection. And whenever I move my components within their range of motion, when the software detects a collision between the components, it will stop at the collision, it will highlight the faces, and furthermore, it'll play a sound. Notice. So the U-joint is pretty useless at this point, and I need to make some modifications so I can move it through its range of motion. Collision detection has found out that this mechanism needs some modification. Fortunately, I have a configuration already set up for that with uh, a few chamfers on the relevant edges. And now we can get back into our move component tool, activate collision detection, and rotate our components, and you can see that there's no sounds, no faces lighting up here at all. We've successfully modified the design so that our mechanism behaves as we would like it to. Another option within the Move Component tool is the ability for SolidWorks to report back to us the clearance between components as we move them through their range of motion. I can simply populate this field with our two yokes continue dragging, and now as I revolve my assembly through its range of motion, you see a dimension pops up there in the graphics area. But furthermore, what it's reporting back to us here is the minimum distance achieved between those two components as we moved it through its range of motion, as well as its current gap between those components. Building upon collision detection functionality is physical dynamics. The way this works is, as components move within their range of motion, when one object collides with another, the other object will move away within available degrees of freedom. Here's a great example of that. These bevel gears, right now, without any outside influences, these two gears are free to interfere with one another. But if I activate Move Component, turn on Physical Dynamics, 
and tell it to check between all the components in here. As I drag one of the bevel gears, notice as soon as it touches the teeth on the other bevel gear, it moves away within its available degrees of freedom. We can even get an idea now as to what the backlash on this mechanism might be. Here's another example. These nested slides. Clearly, I can simply do some drag motion here, and the pins don't stop at the ends of the slots. But if we activate Move Component and turn on Physical Dynamics, as the pin gets to the end of the slot, it collides and behaves in a natural fashion, and I can pull this slide out to its maximum extension. And now I can understand if this particular mechanism has the stroke that I'm looking for. That's Physical Dynamics. Well, that was a quick tour of some of the versatile options that we have within SolidWorks Move Component Tool. I hope you found it helpful.